Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we start building the Mini Model S in earnest. All right, so today we start uh, cutting out the interior, the drive system on the, the Model S, and we start building the frame. So uh, we've got the shell here, obviously, and I bought several runs of this. Uh, it is one inch by one and a half inch, eighth inch wall, uh, aluminum box tube, and that's what we're making the frame out of. So I, uh, yesterday, I assembled the rear axle. So the first thing to do is to, um, to lay out the Mini Model S, remove the rear drive unit, get the axle set for the right width for inside the car. Uh, I'll have to cut out some of the inside of the car as well to get the axle set where I want, and then begin measurements. I'll probably trace uh, the, the body on, directly on the table with a marker and uh, so I can get component positioning and layout and start building the frame as we go. I, I'm not going to draw this. I rarely draw anything when I build it. I just sort of uh, start building and um, I have a mental picture of what I want, but I really let uh, mechanical interferences and, and that sort of dictate where I go. Breaking out the big guns for this. factory drive unit. Now in case you're wondering why I decided to just take a sawzall and hack it out, I started looking at how to remove it and honestly it was a pretty daunting undertaking to disassemble everything, pull it out, only to have to cut that all out anyway to make room for the, um, the new axle and drive system. So I figured it'd just be easier to hack it out with the sawzall and looks like I was right. Alright, next step is to get the right axle, uh, the right width so I can set the axle up at the correct, correct size, correct length. So, I've got it set up a little bit too narrow currently. So I'll go ahead and disassemble the axle so I can get it set to the right width. So it looks like I need to extend the axle about an inch and a half. Alright, there we go. That should be the right length, or closer to it anyway. So let's see. other than I need to cut away more of the stock bodywork. But I really wanted to do this just to pretty much get, get a feel for where the frame rails would be. And uh, kind of lucky here, the frame rails will be right at the, the tub walls, uh, which is really kind of what I wanted. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is um, uh, cut away a little bit more of the, of the stock body. for the saw to give me a, a rough idea of where the opening should be. There we go. Not too bad. I think at this point I can start, uh, start working on the frame itself. You can see what I did here is I took a Sharpie marker and I traced out the outline of the Mini Model S on my, uh, my aluminum work table. So this is the wheel well opening and what I did is I did my best to get the inside at where the inside edge of the body would be. So this way I know where to lay out the axles and uh, 
what the limit of the frame would be. So, so there's where the rear axle will be, and um, here's the bearing carriers. So I'll begin cutting and welding together the frame that will ultimately weld to these bearing carriers. And uh, once the basic frame is welded together and laid out, uh, then I can start on the front axle assembly, get that in, and then I can just continue to build from there. Is I've drawn a center line. Uh, that's the exact center line of the body. And then um, I measured the distance between the bearing carriers on the axle and went ahead and transferred that distance off onto this grid. So this is the left side uh, frame rail, right side frame rail. So um, that's where the frame rails will be laid out, and then I'll mark where the axles go and various cross ties uh, to, um, uh, to support the frame left to right. And then ultimately the frame will go out uh, to the outer um, perimeter of the, of the body, but we're not going to be dealing with that just this second. Uh, first I'm going to um, get the main frame laid out and get the axle carriers welded together. And uh, I'll also um, weld sort of a, a bumper uh, front, and, uh, that's the rear side, as well as at the front. So uh, that'll help support the body and um, give it a little bit of protection if I bump into something uh, rather than crushing the plastic body. Uh, in case you're wondering, this material that my workbench is made out of is actually an aluminum pier section. Uh, it's six feet long. Normally these pier sections would be eight feet long, but this was a display model I got from Menards uh, several years ago, and it is um, laid on top of uh, Mechanic's toolbox. Uh, there's actually two toolboxes back to back, so there's drawers on this side, drawers on the other side, and then I welded together a steel frame with extremely heavy duty casters. This thing, oh my gosh, it's got to weigh 450 pounds, somewhere in that range, but it can wheel around if I unlock the brake on the wheels and move it around. But I love this because I can weld on top of it. I can clamp my, my welder ground right to the table if I want to. And it's got these, these grid lines that are at exactly 90 uh, degree angle from the edge. I can lay a straight edge into this groove here and... Um, if I'd like to, uh, to true things up, but I basically can use these lines as a guide. And uh, anything I draw on here with a, a Sharpie marker comes right off with, uh, with acetone. So anyway, we'll uh, get to cutting and welding. Now, in case you're wondering <clears throat> how to approximate an angle, uh, what I'll be doing here is I'll be putting a, um, a piece of aluminum across the frame here and then angling it to the side. Well, what I've done here, in order to calculate the, the correct angle to, uh, to cut that, that aluminum uh, tube at, is I laid a carpenter square here, and then you can, see, you can see my line on the table under the carpenter square. So then I take a ruler, lay it roughly along that line, and look, and I've got, it gives me roughly 30 degrees, um, probably 32 degrees, 30 I don't know, we'll call it an even 30 degrees. And um, so what that means is I'll have to cut a 15 degree bevel in the center section of the bumper and a 15 degree bevel in the, the um, side portion in order to give me the 30 degrees I'm looking for. All right, now one more item. You'll notice the, the frame rails drawn out on the table here. One more item is that um, for steering clearance, the front wheels will steer and hit the frame rail. So what I need to do is jog the frame rails inward to clear the steering of the front wheels. So I'll calculate that and draw it out on the table now. So there are uh, some of the pieces cut and laid out ready to go. So the next step is to, um, to tack them all together, grab out the TIG welder and uh, just start tacking them temporarily and, uh, and then begin uh, cutting some of the cross ties and various components before I finish weld the entire frame. Hoping to have the frame pretty well finished this weekend.
Well, you can hear the welder running in the background. Uh, it's got to run, the fan's got to run to cool it off a bit. But that's a little bit of TIG welding for you. So the frame is, um, oh, I'd say maybe halfway done. Um, obviously, it's very light, it's aluminum. So um, you can see the, the welds there. I'm not, a, not the best welder on earth, but gets the job done. I have quite a few seams left to weld yet. All right, so there's the frame, basic TIG welded together. There's still a number of different inside corners in that that I need to weld. But uh, you can see the layout, uh, where the wheels will be. And um, so these bearing carriers here will be welded to the frame spars. I'll machine a flat on each bearing carrier and very carefully locate them on the frame spars and weld them down. And um, so it's coming along really well. It's going to be very tight for my feet up front, but... Uh, should be pretty cool. I'm um, looking forward to, uh, to getting it all together, but uh, yeah, I expect to have the rolling chassis assembled this weekend, barring any unforeseen disasters. So there it is.